The following is an edited recording from a live video broadcast. Image and audio quality may vary. Question. Was Star Trek Discovery a good Star Trek series and how does it rate alongside its peers? I think the trouble with Star Trek Discovery is it's probably Star Trek in name only, where it's got the the uniforms and it's got the ships and things like that but it very for me it, it it doesn't have the adventuring spirit that star trek has it has too much character drama i don't mind character drama but i gave up on discovery i think it was the beginning of series four when there was three or four episodes that was just about the character drama and the b plot was the exciting stuff that i wanted to see mm -hmm. the other issue i have with Star Trek Discovery is there's no consistency in the characters between seasons. So <clears> season <throat> one, they set up all this Klingon backstory that they're obviously going to go into. And you have Burnham being more of a Vulcan because she's raised mm. on Vulcan than a human. And then series two, because series one wasn't re well received, and I do appreciate the producers try and change stuff because of feedback, Everything went out the window. Half the characters changed. They killed people off. Burnham was suddenly an action hero. And then mm -hmm. uh, Giorgio's character totally changed from, you know, merciless killer to helping everyone. And, uh, and I said, look, I'll give it a go because they've obviously tried to retool it because the first series didn't go down well. The Klingons all disappeared. I, I don't know if they came back later. Um, and then series three, they shot into the future and it turned into a Star Wars show with alien um, bounty hunters and cantinas and, you know, all of this. The burn had destroyed the Federation. So for me, if it was if it was originally set in the future, I could probably understand it was different. But because it was set in the past, I would have thought it to be more like Star Trek, more like the original Star Trek than any other series. Things I don't like in Star Trek, swearing. Things I don't like in Star Trek, dumb characters, Look, I'm, and I'm not being mean, Tilly, how did she get through Starfleet Academy? You have Wesley Crusher that can't even get in because he doesn't pass an exam or something. And mm. there was a background character that was a cyborg and looked pretty cool. And the fans go, that's an amazing character. And they killed her. I was like, this is not the series that I, is for me. I'm going to give you a lot of credit. So for those who don't know, Aaron is not pre-warned as to what the question will be. Like, I mean, he has no idea, right? The fact you've been able to recall all that just off the top of your head. I'm actually very impressed. There are things I go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. No, I forgot about that. The fact that, yeah, didn't get any forewarning whatsoever, uh, I've got to give you a lot of credit for. Yeah, the reason why I brought the question up is that, for the most part, I thought most people had just forgotten about it, just ignored it. Uh, it's mentioned about Strange New... Just watched Strange New World's Discovery Jump the Shark after second season. Yet, I've come across a couple of people who thought it was really, really good. Now, I haven't watched season four or five. I sort of stopped after season three. Uh, and to sort of hear what everybody thinks. Now, I agree with you. I did not like the swearing. Uh, you know, we had that in, I think, one of the pilot episode or whatever else. Uh, that was not ideal. And I remember when it was first premiered at Austrek, it really did uh, alienate a lot of the older fans because it was just so radically different, considering it's set between Enterprise and the original series. Uh, and then you're right, in the third season, they jump off into the distant future, and it just seemed like a real hodgepodge of stuff. I am curious to wonder, though, whether in the pantheon of Star Trek TV shows, if it's just going to be re relegated to the bottom forever, or whether it will have this core fan group who go, we absolutely love Discovery. Uh, it's the best thing ever. But it's intriguing to see where it fits now because it got overwiped by Strange New Worlds even Picard to a small degree, but it's still just kind of hanging in there, a bit like what Enterprise did once upon a time. Colin has said, Discovery has its critics and its fan. Discovery tried to reinvent the Star Trek wheel, so to speak. Sometimes it worked, some it didn't. That's the reason why they went to the 32nd century in the yeah. third season, because they could start afresh, right, and start new and not have to deal with continuity and all the rest of it. And yet, ironically, as that was occurring, Strange New Worlds was a spinoff from Discovery, and that just, like... It's the one show that everybody's talking about and Discovery, the parent show, has almost been forgotten. So I was intrigued by that. It really, really was. We've got Colin here, so I'll ask a question. It's a 10-second delay, and then we'll come back to it when he answers. Being the president of Oztrek, did Discovery actually get people joining Oztrek just because they watched Discovery and became fans? It is interesting you bring up Strange New Worlds, where I think Discovery might have actually done better if Strange New Worlds was the pilot show and Discovery mm. was the spin-off from that because Strange mm. New Worlds 
is safe for Star Trek. It's an updated version of the original series and people might, you know, not like recasting classic legacy characters like Spock. I don't like that, but I think he's great. Now I've given it a couple of series, um, even a couple of episodes, I mean, and I think it's actually better written because I think Strange New Worlds is story-driven where they're going to, what the characters are putting in the situation when they arrive, where Discovery is character-driven and the story seems to be the secondary thing to what's going on with the characters. And I like, I do like that, but I just think they pushed it too far. So I can answer the Austrian question because I was actually there at the time. The answer is no. No, people came in because of Discovery, unlike, say, back in the 90s when Next Generation first aired. If anything, it might have even turned some people away. What it did do, though, is stop people talking about it. Like, no one discusses Discovery at Austrian at all. Austrian, for those who don't know, is the Star Trek fan club, whereas Strange New Worlds is the bee's knees of everything. Um, yeah. So I like the idea they took a couple of risks and they said, okay, we'll make it like a, a season-long arc that goes the whole way through the show. But I can also understand why it wouldn't work because people are used to such a particular formula that to be so radically different actually goes against the grain of what some of the fan base liked, uh, yeah. especially a fan base that stretches back decades. And I'm intrigued to see, because I thought for a period of time there, I even asked people, is the show still being made? Because nobody talks about it. Like, no, It just doesn't get mentioned anywhere. And if you ask anybody, do you watch Discovery? No. But I spoke to a mate of mine recently, and he said he actually thought it was really good, and that was completely left field i did not expect that from this particular individual uh colin said no new fans became members because of discovery some people did attend our meetings in the early series due to the fact it was a new series yeah before they realized what it was but i do remember when it was screened at austrack the reaction was like oh my god this is just not nah, not happening which is unfortunate so i do wonder if it'll be one of those shows where as of today it's kind of like being pushed under the carpet but years from now suddenly it just finds a cult following because people go it really works, even though I think the third season, from what I saw, was actually quite weak. Season one and two were actually very, very strong. Yeah. I, I think with what, with what you're talking about, um, swearing as well, in the Star Trek universe, they often use the, the fact that someone actually swore as a comedy moment, if like Data swore or Worf said something yeah. that was inappropriate, mm -hmm. to have it that it's just normal conversation actually goes against that it isn't normal conversation. You, you drop the F-bomb or something, and that jarred. And I do remember when it came out, talking to customers in the shop, and they found it hard to talk about because some of the stuff about, you know, the Klingon baby and killing babies and yeah. things like that was just a bit too far for the Star Trek audience. Yeah, I mean, they redesigned the Klingons. And I actually like the Klingon redesign. I like, really like the fact they didn't speak English at all. It was all subtitled. Trek has always been episodic, and that's right. So it was a huge risk when they were doing the, arc, the, the season-long arcs, which, of course, meant that if you joined in Episode 6, Episode 3 had no idea what the story was all about. And, of course, they did end up using the F word in Picard as well. Regardless yeah. of that, it's still a part of the canon. I mean, I found the funny they invented the thing of the spore drive, and I said to people as a joke, if they had the spore drive everywhere, and I mean, the, the, the pilot episode of Voyager, they follow the marquee off into the Delta Quadrant, and they go, that's okay, wind up the spore drive, we'll fly back, roll credits, it's all over in less than 30 seconds. I think it's one of those things where they took a lot of really popular star trek concepts and changed them and it made it worse now when they had the mirror universe in the original star trek they didn't do yeah. it in, in in next generation but they came to it in deep space nine and it was fun but when they did it in discovery it was like um you know it's a it's a terrible thing to say torture porn and you had really really violent stuff happening to characters that you yeah. you like and sympathized with now i can't remember the alien character there was the one where they you know talk about eating them and stuff like that and i just mm. think it is a bit a bit too much for star trek if it was a different series and it was all original characters and it, it might have worked but because it was had an expectation of when you put on the star trek uniform your mm. starfleet it didn't work for me yeah, see, it worked for me. I actually quite liked it. But my other half, Lynn, nah, she abandoned it after the first episode. It was just too gruesome and gross and whatever. But I thought I actually applauded it, even though I knew it would alienate half the fan base. Uh, as I said about how you love Discovery with Enterprise, Enterprise was a great series. It was a great series, but in terms of uh, its success amongst Deep Space Nine, Voyager, blah, 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 it got 
down the bottom. That's why I only went to, was it four years, five years? Never got to its, its full seven years. Yeah. Um, so there you go. And just very quickly to finish off, uh, the day when we screened the first episode of Ostrich, the whole place was a buzz. The mood was totally different at the end. This was a Star Trek's Phantom Menace moment. Yeah. It was it was culture shock and it was a bit uh, extreme. But, you know, let's see, 10, 20 years from now, you never, never know. It might end up having this massive fan following, yeah. which is particularly cool. Yeah.